So I imagine, Brevin, you're a very proud Stanford man. You, you got your shirt on, your Stanford shirt yeah. today. Yeah, this this when I was playing, this was the student section. That's how old this shirt is. Okay. I, I think I think it's I don't know if it's mine or when my daughter went there, she got one, and this may, maybe she got it for me. But yeah, so now I'm I am the sixth man for all of Stanford sports. I would imagine just a few weeks into this college football season, it's still hard to come to just the realization that you're you're in the you're in the ACC. That's, that's got to be weird. Uh, it, it, it has been extremely weird, especially when you got to start talking about, and it's like you're on the ACC network, which and the only thing that's been good <laughs> is that at least you can get the ACC network on a lot of different platforms. A lot, it's a lot easier than having to get the Pac-12 network. But uh, it, it, the biggest thing is getting used to the style of play of the football team and, and with the quarterback being so much of a, a, a dual threat. Uh, and then running so many plays with him, handling the bat, handling the ball, and 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 running, it's it's uh it's so it's a, it's a big adjustment all the way around. Um, how long will it take to come to grips or realize the fact that Memphis is a part of the, the conference of champions? Well, well Memphis, I, this, this, Pac-12, <laughs> Memphis Tigers. How about that? This is I don't know if how. I guess they'll keep all the records and we'll, we'll, that'll all keep going. But we always say, you start looking at these conferences and just say, that's not my conference. And, and, and I, I think I'll look at this and say, that's not my conference. Dude, I, I was just looking at the schedule this week and there's a game, USC's at Michigan this week. And I was like, oh, that's a great game. You know, nice non conference. That's a conference, conference game. Day. <laughs> conference day. How about the travel that those, that they all have to do now, these West Coast teams between, UCLA, USC, Stanford, Cal, what they have to do, Arizona, uh, the, the, the cross-country traveling for these teams is, is going to be inordinate. The, I guess the only one, the only teams that won't be as affected is the footballs because you just do it one time. It's not right. as though you have to, you'll have multiple times within a week of having to travel somewhere. And, but when you start getting into, you know, into this basketball, Having to travel multiple times, I think we talked about it before. They have to be very strategic about the scheduling and, and what the travel is going to be like for these student athletes. <laughs> uh, yes, so uh, the poor student athletes. <laughs> Welcome everyone to Night Court. This is another edition of the large program. I am Rob Fisher, Brevin Knight here as well. We are with you. You can follow us on Twitter. I'm at the Fish Nation. Brevin is at Brevin Knight 22, the show at Night Court 22. We thank you for listening to the podcast. And if you're watching the podcast, thank you for watching the podcast. And if you're listening, we, you can watch uh, every week as well on the Bluff City Media youtube channel and of course you can listen wherever you get your podcasts we're getting closer and closer to the nba season brevin uh because i know this because everyone keeps asking me yeah about to get traveling huh or <laughs> or you excited excited it's getting close you excited and i kept thinking to myself oh my god it is getting close it's like a few <laughs> weeks away and uh, we're gonna have basketball at fedex forum well, well, listen. In, in less than two weeks, we'll be it. We'll be doing a, uh, an opener for training camp. We'll, we'll be doing training camp shows. The team will go to training camp, and then they'll start playing games. And, and the thing about it is, it's, it's been the longest layoff that we have had oh. in a long in, in a long time. And I think for for that, I have had I've been as anxious as I've ever been to get back to calling games because this layoff has almost felt like a mini retirement. And what it let me know is I'm not ready to retire. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm not at that point at, at, in any way, shape or form. And so, yeah, I'm chopping at the bit to get back there. And that, the other thing why we're excited is because you feel like you, you have a chance to still be one of the better teams in the association with the guys that are coming back, with the new additions, putting it all together. Uh, it, the, the excitement for this team uh, is through the roof. 
Yeah, no doubt about it. Man, I, I can't wait. Um, and you're right. It, it, fe- it felt like when the season ended and when the finals ended, it was like, oh, my God, that's just that's the long. end. This has been forever. Yes. <laughs> and yes. then now it's like, oh, just been it's been a long off season for sure. You know, when, when you have new players, new players have to adapt to new coaches and have to adapt to teammates. Uh, we, we've talked about one positive thing about this Grizzlies team this year going into camp is that you have everybody back. You know, everybody's kind of coming into camp, kind of knowing what you, to expect from Taylor Jenkins. They'll be able to just hit it right off the bat. Um, but they do have a completely new staff. How, how big yes. of a factor is that? Uh, I think it's a huge factor because uh, not just in terms of X and O's, what your assistant coaches get done in ter- or working out players, but there also becomes a trust factor that gets built up with, with assistant coaches because a lot of times they're the ones that are going to take get the bitch in the moaning from the players more than anybody. They're the ones that when they're in practice and they're their referees, guys are going to go at them, but then they're also the guys that, when things aren't going well, they're able to come and talk to you. Or when you need something clarified or you want you are you may be going through something off the court, you feel very comfortable being able to go and talk to those guys. So I think as much as you talk about building chemistry and camaraderie on the court between the players, there's also gonna have to be a little bit of that done between with the coaching staff and the players now with as many people that are that'll be new to the game. And so uh, I think as as long as there's one focus, which I know that there'll be Taylor Jenkins will do a great job at explaining and laying out exactly what they want to get done. Then I think there, there won't be any blurred lines in terms of what the goals are. Now it's just a matter of getting to know one of each other's temperament and how, we, how each other clicks, especially when things start to get heated. They, they wanted to implement a new offense, kind of new offense last year obviously everything went to hell uh, and, and you couldn't really implement anything. Uh, but uh, they finished last in the NBA offense right. last year. Uh, so now to implement a new offense, how complex is that? Uh, it, it's, it's very complex, but I think it's going back to last year, you, you couldn't have expected any level of consistency no. with the amount of lineups, players who may be available on a nightly basis. It, it was it was too haphazard of a season because of the injuries in those situations that you you couldn't expect anything uh, that will resemble what they thought it was going to be at the beginning of the year. Uh, but this season, I, I think it's 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 tough in terms of you go in with your thought of this is what you would hope would work, and then when you get in there, you hope that it all works out the way that you had planned it to. But there there may be adjustments. That have to be made, and so when you are when you're starting brand new in terms of what your schemes or what it may be, and then you also have to make an adjustment. That's just two steps over. If this was already something that was in place, guys were already accustomed to. It was a carryover from next year with a couple of changes and wrinkles here. Then that's just making some adjustments. But this is going to be learning and adjustments that they may have to do uh, as the season g- continues to go along. But uh, I-, I think at, at the end of the day it'll come down to the players being able to make plays. There'll be plays that probably to get guys in positions to be successful, but the availability of your major guys for the majority of the year, the ability for them to grasp whatever the concepts are on the offensive and defensive end, but you don't want to cloud guys' minds with trying to overthink the game. You still want to allow just the, the ability to go out and play. Right. Uh, CBSSports.com, they did a ranking. I know how you love rankings. This oh, one is... What we got now? They rank all the coaches in the NBA. Okay. They rank all the coaches in the NBA. Now, here are the categories on how they're evaluating these coaches. All right? Okay. Uh, track record, uh, performance against expectations, okay. uh, p- points of emphasis, like does your team take the right kind of shots? Do they allow the right kind of shots? Do they have ways of generating turnovers without fouling? Things like that. Uh, creativity, okay. player development, rotation management, and people management. All right. Good. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, I got it. They have the they have these in tiers. Tier nine 
it, it says we don't know enough. And, and it's basically five coaches who are new, along with Darko Ryakovich, former Grizzlies coach of the Raptors. They have him 26. Uh, Jordy Fernandez of the Nets, Charles Lee of the Hornets, Brian Keefe of the Wizards, J.J. Redick of the Lakers, 26 through 30. We don't know. Can't rank I mean, those guys. At, at all. Yeah. Understandable. Tier 8, entitled I Wouldn't Be Enthused. Tier 8, <laughs> I Wouldn't Be Enthused. Wow. Number 25, Chauncey Billups of the Trailblazers. 24, Billy Donovan of the Bulls. 23, J.B. Bickerstaff of the Pistons, and 22, Doc Rivers of the Bucks. Your guy. My guy. Wow. Not getting the respect. Getting the respect. Lot, well, well, I think a lot of a lot of it was because they, they expected him to be a, a driving force of turning things around in Milwaukee last year, and lo and behold, it was more than just the head coach where the issues lie with that team. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, tier seven, you look promising, but it's still a tad early. Looking promising, okay. but still early. 21, Kenny Atkinson of the Cavaliers. 20, Willie Green of the Pelicans. And 19, Jamal Mosley of the Magic. All right. Okay. So yeah, I, I, like, I like that tier. That's a good tier, right? You're seeing, you're seeing where people can go, and what Kenny Atkinson for him is what he did with Brooklyn, a a really a team that overachieved, and then did such a good job on the bench, you know, be, being with Steve Kerr and the Warriors. Yeah, so we'll see. Uh, tier six, middle of the road, middle of the road, number eighteen, Jason Kidd of the Mavericks, seven seventeen, Taylor Jenkins of the Grizzlies. 16, Quinn Snyder of the Hawks. And 15, Michael Malone of the Nuggets. How was Quinn Snyder in with those other three people? I don't, I don't, I don't know. That's a good question. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out, how, like, what, what, what is, like, how did that, how did that come about? How about Michael Malone? Uh, 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 that's, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm listening to the three names that you said. You said... Mike Malone, Mike Malone, Taylor Jenkins. You said, uh, and then is, Quinn, uh, the Quinn. But what's what's the other the other guy? And then uh, it was uh, Jason Kidd. Yeah, Jason Kidd. I mean, you you talking about three coaches who all, whose teams were number one in their conference at some point in time, whose teams went deep into the playoffs. And then and then then you have the Hawks, right? <laughs> and the Jazz before that. <laughs> yeah, not a lot, not a lot. Um, tier five, uh, it's a tier for to one person all alone. It's the living legend Greg Popovich, ranked fourteenth, fourteenth for Greg Popovich. Has the one to see. What well, stands to see? I mean, how can he win with? Today's generation of player. Yeah, uh, hasn't won a playoff series since 2017, which is uh, a little surprising. Uh, tier a different game. Yeah. Tier four, the obvious floor raisers. 13 is Mike Brown of the Kings. 12 is Chris Finch of the Timberwolves. 11, Joe Mazzula of the Celtics. 10, Tom Thibodeau of the Knicks. 9, Mike Budenholzer of the Suns. And 8, I'm a Udoka of the Rockets. What was the name of that category? Who were they? The obvious floor raisers. Yeah, that means like they they these are the guys that that make their teams better. You think? Raise yeah. elevate their teams. Yes. I mean, again, yeah. I, I I mean, you but he made Udoka up there. I mean, it's not. I mean, Houston Houston didn't. They were the only coach for one year. They didn't right. coach one year. They're decent in Boston. You got to have had a – yeah, Budenholzer got, Bud got fired because he couldn't. Right. That's what I'm about to say. Budenholzer didn't have a coach. <laughs> right. He was, he, was, he, was, he, was, he was fired after winning the conference in the regular season. 
Um, all right, let's see. The next tier, tier three, the Wonderkins. Seven Will Seven ranked seven on this list is Will Hardy. Bro. That's what and I'm number number six, Mark Daniel. <laughs> In the I mean, NBA. I, 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 I give Dagnall a lot of, I give I give Dagnall credit. There's you've seen the results of his team. Like you've seen them get better. Like as much as we talked about how can you do this with young guys. Well, number one, they've kept the majority of those young guys around, and those young guys have gotten better as right. as time has gone along. So I, I can I can kind of see there, but I mean Hardy, again, like I mean, maybe this is on some future forecasting that we don't understand yet. Yeah. All right. Uh, tier two are the elites. They call them the elites. Number five, Ty Lu. Number four, Steve Kerr. Number three, Rick Carlisle. And number two, Nick Nurse. Nick Nurse. Now, I I give Nick Nurse credit because he thinks outside the box. I like Nick uh, Nurse. I, I I don't know if I'd put him number two in the league. Me neither. I mean, I mean, I know who number one is, but yeah, this this is a this is again. You gave me some criteria as to how it was the point system, but. I don't know. I don't know what the value of every category was because it, it right. could not. Have, they could not. Couldn't have all had the same weight. Right. All right. So there you go. There. There's your your coach's ranking. Number one, Eric Spolstra. By the way, right. uh, if, if you say, didn't yeah, know, Eric Spolstra right. at number one. Uh, also this week in the NBA, following an NBA Board of Governors meeting on Tuesday in New York, Commissioner Adam Silver told reporters. There was not a lot of discussion with the board regarding expansion, but not because it doesn't remain a strong possibility that the league is moving toward adding another franchise or two. He said there was not a lot of discussion about expansion, but only largely because not for lack of interest. It's because we had said two potential franchise suitors that were not quite ready. It's something that we told our board we plan to address this season, but we're not ready yet. There's interest in the process, and I think that we're not there yet with having made specific decisions about markets or even, frankly, to even expand. We're expanding, right? I mean, it's probably they're, 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 they're definitely they're not gonna going take teams to. away. No, heck no. The, the, the business is doing so well. I think there's just you, you just have to be careful about how you do it, uh, and when you do it. I think that that's what it comes down to how, when, and where. Are, are the things that you have to worry about because uh, it is more revenue sharing. Number one, for you got to get you have to get all the other teams to be on board because right now you have a one thirtieth share. Eventually, now you got to be a one thirty second share, uh, right? In that way, um, and then, and then you you just have to you like as far as talent, uh, is there enough talent to support? two more basketball teams to continue along this line of parity uh, that they've done such a good job of creating. So I, I think they're just, there, there'll be, there are questions that have to be answered. Um, and, you know, the one thing that they're, that you know that they're, they're going to do is they'll do their due diligence, but those, those teams that people can, that, that continue to be talked about will stay high on the list. All right, uh, National Football League. The New Orleans Saints are for real, BK. How about this? Saints go into into Dallas and just stomp the Cowboys, and and and, and they are putting up points. Ninety-one and, points in two games. Uh, sheesh. Yeah, they look real. And, and then now, this week they got on, Philadelphia. That's good. Just our, uh, the NFC East. Just continue to stumble over yourself. Until so the Giants can get themselves right and they can make a push. That's right. Uh, Giants, meanwhile, became the first team in NFL history to score three or more touchdowns, allow no touchdowns, and lose in regulation. <laughs> what's going on? You know, on, listen, man? like, let me tell you what go, what's going on. It's, it's, it's a saying that my, my dad used to tell us when, when we were younger is that uh, bad teams find a way to lose. At the end of the day, bad teams find a way to lose. You can look at the stats and be like, how in the heck did they not win this game? It's because they're not a good team. Mm-hmm. No, and it they're starts not. At the, and I told you it starts at the top. 
it starts with the arrogance at the top, and it, it just trickled down throughout the team to where we are at this point. Right. Uh, historic day in the Wimba over the weekend on Sunday. Asia Wilson of the Aces became the first player to score 1,000 points in a regular season. And Caitlin Clark of the Fever set the rookie season record score for scoring with 761 points, and she still has more to go. Uh, it's a historic season in the WNBA period. It's a historic season. I mean, you talk about and from individual players, what they've been able to do, to do the attendance, the new TV deal that they that they've been able to sign that will increase salaries in their league uh, and will continue to to uh, create the exposure that is necessary for those ladies and because uh, they deserve it first and foremost and and again the brand of basketball I say it every week is just it's a it's a fun brand of basketball uh, and I'm glad that more people uh, are taking it in whatever the reason may be uh, it, it is it is it's a, a benefit. For the league, yeah, no doubt about it. It's been, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. We keep talking about it too. Come playoff time, how much fun it's going to be to watch uh, the postseason in the WNBA, and then it'll just lead right on up into the NBA season, which is fantastic. The timing's well, just great. Well, I'll tell you another thing that's cool about the WNBA when you get to the playoffs. I think you're going to get more of that college crowd. Number one, because of the venues where they play, uh, and number two, the fans, the type of fans that they are getting to come uh, coming to these games are fans that, that are uh, into the game uh, and, and really bring a, a level of energy that you can feel when it, coming through the TV. I like to just turn those games up sometime and just, and, and so that you're able to, to take in the entirety of what's going on inside the arena. Right. What was your favorite college gym to play in? Favorite college gym to play in outside of being in Maples, uh, which to me was was fantastic, especially with the springy floor. I love I love going down and, and playing in UCLA, but I like playing in Oregon. Like I, I, I enjoyed playing at Oregon, which was is Matt Court. It was crazy because they had like uh, beans that were in the top of the of the of the arena and people would sit literally in the worst seats that you could sit in and you had to keep looking around the beam, but it was such a hot ticket. It was always loud. Um, and, and so it, that was, that was, it was hostile and it's always fun to win in hostile environments. Yeah. Uh, me, and in the NBA, was there one that that was a better place to win than others? No, I mean, if you went in, in Madison square garden is good. Sure. I told you that that the 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 NBA is 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 so much the business of basketball, and it's the the nostalgia of either the arena or if you're playing against a some type of team dynasty, uh, right. that makes it. So when I when we were playing against Chicago in my early career, and we were playing in the United Center at that time, it was like number one, it was super packed. That played the organs all the time. It was it was just uh, it was a, an entirely different environment and a tough place to play. Uh, and but that was all because very right, great fans. But it was because the Bulls were who they were. Right, right. Um, all right, uh, television. I got some television stuff for you. What you got? Uh, I want to. Who is your favorite commercial crew? Okay, and I'll give you some. I'll give you some examples. Uh, okay. You got the Wendy's people. They're kind of funny. Uh, kind of funny. Kind of funny. Uh, the progressive people unbecoming your parents with Dr. Rick. I love those. He's great. Uh, the progressive people with Flo and company. Flo is good. Uh, you got Lily from AT and T. No, you know, know who the the for me with this is the what's the bank one? Chase Bank. Um, is that that's is that them? It's, or is that isn't that what they have when you do Spike Lee and. So, Capital One. They, Capital One. Yeah. Like Capital With Spike One. Spike and all them. Yes. What is Capital One paying them fools? Because Man. those guys act like fools on those commercials. They did. Yeah. I mean, it, every time I see one of those commercials with Barkley, Spike, and who else? Barkley, yeah, Spike, it, and uh, it's, um, Samuel know, uh, Jackson. Samuel Jackson. Yeah. And sometimes Jim Nance. I think to myself, they, they, they're acting like they'll do anything anything what are they paying those people a lot oh no let me tell you the other one who's paying a lot of money state farm 
Jake and company. Yeah. Hold on. They got everybody. I mean, you, you, Blake Griffin. They had yep. the, the Lopez twins. The Lopez brothers. Yes. Exactly. I mean, Chris Paul. They had Cliff was with, with Chris. Yeah. I mean, they they started they started shelling out big time. Yeah, no doubt. And one of my favorites, I think, is Fansville. Dr. Pepper. Fansville is a good one. Also, getting all Fansville. getting all of the Hall of Fa- all of the Hall of Famers back together. The Heisman House. Yep. Yeah, with all the Heisman winners come back to the house. I don't know. I guess, uh, yeah, I guess I would go with uh, Fansville might be my favorite. I love I love the Fansville with the the the, the fake town uh, of college football. That's that's not that's 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 not a, that's not that's not a bad one. But there are a lot of good ones. Unbecoming your parents with Doctor Rick is about as good as it gets. I was, listen, I was the one with L Cool J and he's like, John's going to do the selfie. He's like, don't do the selfie. He's like, I got to do the selfie. Right here. Yeah. <laughs> All right, three, two, one. <laughs> say, don't count down. <laughs> yeah. That was, oh, yeah. That I, one, I, I, I love it. That, that's, that, I got to say, that's one of my better ones. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right. Uh, what was else was I going to tell you? Uh, I was talking about Fansville. I had something about Fansville. No, maybe not. I don't know. I thought I had something else about Fansville. All right. You, you, you were done. That's all I got. Uh, but I do have a toast this week. Okay, who you got? The Tigers football team. Hey, how about that one over Florida, Florida State? You don't want to be a part of us? We don't want you. We Dude, don't need you, Mikey. We best, don't need you. Best part of it was they just went in and beat them. They were the better team. It wasn't. It wasn't a fluke. Nothing. They they were the better team for sixty minutes and walked away with a dub in Tallahassee. It was impressive. You know they should have. You know they should have played. Dum, dum, dum. Mm-hmm. They, they just could have played. You know, they could just whoop that. Hey, whoop. Yeah. Just, that's how. That's how you do it. It was. Uh, it was impressive. So shout out to the Memphis Tigers and uh, their big win over the weekend over Florida state. That was pretty impressive. Now they got Navy this week and they got everything set in front of them uh, as far as possibly making it to the college football playoff. What a, what an amazing year of college football with the college football playoff being expanded to 12 teams with NIL, the way that it is. I mean, Tennessee's got a quarterback who's making $8 million. It's just crazy uh, that all of this is happening in college football and it's uh, setting up to be a historic year. And in this historic season, Memphis is in position uh, if they can keep winning games to, to be a part of it. So uh, shout out to the Memphis Tigers and uh, toast. I got to a toast with my red friend. Mm. Nice. Some of the best lemonade out there. Yeah, I was a little sad today, BK, because I went to the pool um, trying to keep my summer extending, and it was like 90 degrees outside today, so I decided I was going to go to the pool. pool was freezing. But I got in. Felt good. Got a little, you know, one of them jolts to the system. Uh, that's not, man, it's still 90 degrees down here, huh? I'm, I'm on location, on location. This is, I'm at my yeah. parents' house up here in the Poconos. Yeah, 90 in, degrees in here today. No 90 degrees, just 75 degrees up here. Mm, I got in the pool. It was great, except I kept thinking to myself, today, I'm sad because today, quite possibly, is the last pool day that I'll have because uh, Coach Carl, my friend who has a pool, he he's out of town this weekend. I'm out of town next weekend. I mean, you're talking three weeks. Are we still going to be able to get in the pool? Three weeks. I, I hope not because I'll be back in town. So today was so I'm possibly hoping, I'm, the last day. I'm, I am hoping very much so that there's no there are no more pool days by the end mm. of September. Yeah, so that's kind of disappointing. Today, my last pool day. Shout out to the pool. It's been a great year at the pool. People will come up to me. This People have been coming up to me all summer, and they'll come up to me this fall, and they'll come up to me this winter, and they're going to say, dang, you got a good tan. They have been, BK. They have been. And I just say, "Eh, been at the pool all summer, so to the pool. (laughs) I'm going to miss you. I'm going to miss you. All right. Well, that's going to do it. You got anything else? I got nothing. You got nothing? I got nothing. I'm going to enjoy 
My mom made my some of my favorite food tonight, uh, fried chicken and some, some greens, mac and cheese, and sweet potatoes. So I'm going to go back and eat another plate while we watch TV. When we, uh, when we talk next week, it'll be, uh, it'll be the week before camp. Week before camp gets underway. So uh, we're getting close. And uh, basketball preseason games coming here in about three weeks, which is incredible. Looking forward to it. All right, that's going to do it for us here tonight. Thank you very much for tuning in and joining us. Don't forget you can watch every episode at the Bluff City Media YouTube channel. You can listen to every episode wherever you get your podcasts. So uh, thank you much for being a part of the show. We'll do it again next week for BK. I'm Fish. Thanks for listening. And tune in next week here on Night Court. Peace. Thank you for listening to the Night Court Podcast. If you enjoyed Rob and Brevin, hit that like button, subscribe to the Bluff City Media YouTube channel, and enjoy the content. We will see you back here next time.